Well, if you want to be a star, our next guest is the guy that you probably want to talk to because he has gotten some of the biggest names in the business, and he made them the big names in the business. He is as well known as the superstars that he manages. He is Jay Bernstein, and I'm going to say hello to Jay and then turn it over to Robert Conrad. <laughs> He's going to tell us Jay Bernstein stories because they, they've been together a long time. I was Bobby's press agent, That's and right. then I was his manager, and then I produced two movies for him. That's we right. did Wild Wild West Revisited and more Wild Wild West. In fact, together, we had the idea to bring back the first television series as a te TV movie. But because he was so busy doing Centennial, The Duke, all these different things, so we were two years after we announced it. So the other networks said, well, hey, it's a great idea. So they beat us with four other ones that came from series to movies. But we had the idea together to do the first one. We brought back <coughs> Wild Wild West, was it 10 years later? Yeah, it was Jay's idea. It wasn't mine, actually. No, it, it was actually our it idea. It was, uh, well, we did the show the on seven The story you said you were going to tell us, the Jay uh, that was a, a, story. I'll tell you two things, and then I'm going to leave you, because it's, you no, know. No, don't leave. Bob. I want to leave you, because uh, two I things. I get insecure one, if you leave. I one, mean, is you, a, yeah. one is a question of integrity. Jay was just starting out, and one of his first clients was Sammy Davis Jr., the singer, and uh, Nick Adams, who was an actor now deceased and dear, dear mm -hmm. friend of ours. We all belong to Mick, uh, Nick's wife, Carol, who is a lovely person, and their son is a great friend of mine. But they had one of those argumentative things, you know, and she took all the furniture, and Nick called up one day and said, I've got this big house on Robin Drive, but no furniture. And Jay Wynn and I were both in a transition period where we'd love to live in a million-dollar house, so we all moved in with Nick Adams in his home and had a little club with Baron ba Von Bernstein had his chair and we had a men's club in the middle of this residential neighborhood and there was a lot of camaraderie there and we did a lot of planning, career planning. But what Jay did, there's so many things he's done for so many people, myself included. He, he advised me about a major network decision that I have to make in the next two days through my company because I don't work. You know, it's a different deal now. I hire the actors. I don't. In any case, he, he's helped me tremendously. But what he did in the old days is there used to be a guy named Harrison Carroll, and he was the equivalent of Verona Barrett or or any of those people that a lot of people pay attention. He was the National Choir in, in Hollywood, you know. <clears throat> How to Phi Beta Cap is Reddit. Anyway, <clears throat> there was a, this horrendous beef that I had gotten into, horrendous, which could have cost me my show. It was getting a 42 share at that time. And Jay called Harrison and said, well, you can tell him how you bailed me out of it. But that probably saved my career, certainly. And it saved the Wild West from being canceled. And it was all because Jay had the chutzpah, the smooth, to mm -hmm. keep me out of the paper. So well, before, that's even before you go. No, I'm, I'm leaving. No, 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 wait, wait, wait a minute. Just stay, He's going to leave. I enjoyed your clip very much. Good. Well, thanks for, for coming by, Bob. Nice seeing you. Yeah. Thank you. Come back and see you. Veal Veneto. Veal, Veal, Veal Veneto. All right, so here's Bernstein. Can you handle it? All right. I'll do my best, Bobby. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. okay, so we won't hear any more stories, because he, he had all these stories he'd be teased. I'm going to tell you this one. I'm going to tell you that one. i tell you, Bobby is probably... Well, I'll tell you the truth. I, I've handled 600 actors, and I think that he has always been my best friend of all the actors I ever represented. We've stayed good friends. We've stayed really family. And because what Bobby has is integrity... I'd and like and to thank him for the pearls, too. Thanks, well, Bob. Really, it was too much, was, especially you know. for a first meeting. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, but do you know what happens? Is like He's really loyal to his people. Every time he does a project, he's like John Wayne was. He would take his own people and just make sure they were always working and had good parts. And he, he's brought people up in the business like his own studio. And if somebody does something nice to him, he never forgets. It's like he was talking about Nick Adams. He used Nick's son in Black Sheep Squadron and gave him his first starring role. But Bobby has helped people all along. In other words, he and I play mm -hmm. back and forth. But he's one of the most honorable men and probably the most unrewarded because in Centennial, he really didn't get the praise he should have. And did you happen to see yeah. Will, the Gordon Liddy one yeah. that he did? He was brilliant in that. But because it's Robert Conrad, 
I don't think he really gets. We don't. We haven't worked together in mm. like you know four or five. It years. also is just a coincidence that you two are on the show together tonight. I mean, it wasn't a setup. No, thing. but the funny thing was, is Bobby did have something he wanted to ask my advice on, and he called me. I thought I was going to be late, and I made him late, and he just ran in. He had called me on the telephone, and I said, "Look, I have some place to go." We didn't know that we were going to the same place. Same place, place so you ended up here. And he no, said, but I, I guess but he found he is, out what he wanted because he left, right? <laughs> if he only could remember how many sons he's got, then he'd, he'd be all right. <laughs> how do you make somebody a star? I don't know you, how to make built someone a star. Stars. No, I, what I do is I maximize their potential. I know that out there, there is no studio system today, so they need help through the Hollywood jungle. I mean, it is a, a jungle. It's very difficult. And if you go this way, you can land in the quicksand, and this way you can end up with the crocodiles eating you, or this way the cannibals. Somebody has to be a guide. And I'm a guide, and I take people from a certain level to the top because I've been here for so long. I've been here as long as Bobby, 25 years. And I've worked with all of these people. I mean, I went back to Dennis Day and June Allison and Virginia Mayo and Catherine Grayson up to the people that I handle today, which are the Cicely Tysons, and Tatum O'Neill, and Sally Kellerman, and Bruce Boxleitner, and Gil Gerard, and Catherine Hicks. It just, it goes on, but... And a couple of years ago, you had uh, names that became legends, uh, Suzanne Summers and Farrah Fawcett. I started with Farrah, and Suzanne Summers, and Christy McNichol. And before that, the only three people I had managed were Susan Hayward, and Glenn Ford, and Charlotte Rampling. But you went from being a publicist to a manager. Yes, and now I'm also producing. Uh, I have a movie I'm really excited. I'm in the middle of for CBS called Mickey Spillane's Murder Me, Murder You. And Stacy Keach is brilliant as Mike Hammer because Mike Hammer is the ultimate American and Stacy Keach is the ultimate Mike Hammer. We've got uh, Lisa Blunt in the movie that they're talking about her for an Oscar for Officer and a Gentleman. Tanya Roberts, The Last Charlie's Angel. Uh, we have Don Stroud doing his first good guy role after 140 performances as a bad guy. We have Michelle Phillips, and then your guest tomorrow night, Delta Burke, who is a manager, managerial client of mine. She's a star of Filthy Rich, and it's a, it's a great cast, and it's a fun movie. Do you use a lot of your, your publicity techniques to, to create images for your people? I don't know. I haven't been a publicist in nearly eight years. So I've been managing all the time. I guess I was a press agent for 17 years, so I don't think you forget it. You know, I handled from, I told you, the 600 actors. That was in PR. But I had, I handled AT&T and U.S. Steel, Procter & Gamble, General Foods, General Mills, Kodak, Ralston, Purina, Dr. Pepper, a lot of those companies, too. Is it possible, though, to, back to building stars, is it possible to buy stardom in Hollywood? I don't think so. I mean, I've never seen anyone do it in the long run. I've seen people do a lot of things in the short run, but I don't think anyone ever made it to the top by buying it. Bruce, uh, Bruce Boxleitner, who uh, is in the uh, series Bring Him Back Alive, was here with us a couple of weeks ago, and he was the first guy that mentioned your name to me because I'm new in town, and, yeah. and he says that you refer to him as uh, the new Clark Gable. Well, I think you have a lot of the old right. Hollywood in you. You you like that. Well, Farrah Fawcett to me was Betty Grable. Suzanne Summers was Judy Holliday. I've just signed Tatum O'Neill. In my mind, they don't have to look like them. It's just the essence. She's a Elizabeth Taylor about the time of A Place in the Sun. But Bruce Boxleitner has the qualities of Clark Gable, and he and I both feel with Bring Him Back Alive, whether the series stays on or not, because they just announced they're canceling it, right? Well. But there's still a chance, but it doesn't make any difference. The point was what it stood for, the American values of good and evil and the good guys and the bad guys. We said, hey, we'd rather do one year of something that meant something, a role model to younger people, than to do five years of something that doesn't say anything. Because there are no role models anymore like there used to be. When I was a kid, we had political role models, like all the presidents from Roosevelt to Truman to Kennedy. But since Watergate, there's no political role models. And we had military role models that were going to lead us out of a bad economy. We had General MacArthur and Patton and Eisenhower. And ever since two unpopular wars, Korea and Vietnam, there are no political role models. Is that why the films uh, last year that were such big hits like Raiders of the Lost Ark, E.T., and these films, are all, they're all fantasy films? People either want entertainment or someone to look up to. And that's what I'm trying to help, is to 
give them these Tom Selleck type of heroes so that they could say, gee, I'd like to grow up and be like him and maybe he'll help me get through it because that's what it was always like before and there's no one left and so there's more runaway kids. There's, there's a lot of problems. So Bruce Boxleitner is not only Clark Gable, he's a man who's dedicated to helping other people by wanting to play roles that are something that people can look up to. We gotta take a break. We're gonna come back with a young actor that we'll be hearing a lot more about, Rob Lowe. Stay with us for that.